In 1985, just one year after the Chicago Bulls had drafted Michael Jordan, a wealthy businessman by the name of Jerry Reinsdorf decided to purchase this franchise for just $16 million, which was a lot of money back then. But when you compare it to what the Bulls are worth now, it's pretty insane. Reinsdorf had also purchased the White Sox four years prior to that, and of course, he purchased the Bulls just at the right time when the value of the team was incredibly low. But they also had a budding star on their hands who, of course, would eventually turn the franchise around and make it a global brand for decades to come with his sheer influence and icon as a sports legend in Michael Jordan. And of course, Reinsdorf would go on to win six championships from the Bulls dynasty in the 90s, led by Michael Jordan. But ever since that final championship in 1998, the Bulls haven't really been able to garner a lot of winning over the last two and a half decades. Some promising teams here and there and a handful of decent playoff runs. But since that time, the Bulls have only managed to achieve one conference finals appearance. And while we can sit here and blame the front office, the players, the coaching staff, the brunt of the problem lies with the Bulls ownership and the Reinsdorf family. And while I think we can all and while I think we all can't wait for the day when the team is sold to a new owner, one who actually cares to win and is not going to try to cut corners and saving a few bucks, unfortunately, I'm here to tell you all, it's not going to be happening anytime soon, and I'll explain why in this video. So what's going on everyone? You're listening to Bull Central here. Hope you're all doing well. Now, the reason this topic was brought up was because there were some rumors floating around that Reinsdorf was considering selling the White Sox after this abysmal season they're having and a lot of backlash from the fans. Reinsdorf did away with the front office and hired someone internally, a lazy hire to save money and time instead of going out and finding someone externally for a change of scene and culture within the organization. But Jerry Reinsdorf quickly shot down those rumors that he's not going to be selling the White Sox, but when those rumors came out, Bulls fans started getting excited. Hey, maybe he's had enough. He's tired of running two franchises, he's in his mid-80s, and just wants to sell, cash in on the money, and retire. That's what we would like to think anyway. Like, just take the money and run, dude. You know you don't have a good standing with the fans anyway. Just cash out and be done with it. But here's the thing. As dumb and as incompetent as Jerry Reinsdorf might seem to Bulls fans, he's still a smart businessman. And when you have a franchise like the Chicago Bulls that is one of the highest valued franchises in the NBA, really in sports in general, not even just the NBA, you're cashing in money on this global brand and still making millions off the back of Michael Jordan that no matter what you do, no matter how average or how bad the team is, even when they've gone through the rebuilding years, you're still going to be selling tickets. You're still selling merchandise, all because of one player you had back in the 90s who happened to be the greatest player of all time. A player you did not draft, by the way, since that was under the previous ownership. So yes, we like to give Jerry all the crap in the world for being this cheap, lazy owner and an owner who doesn't care about winning. And all that is true, by the way, which I'll talk about. At the end of the day, though, he has no incentive to sell this team. And let's be real, none of us would either if it was us. If you own a franchise that was a money printing machine and didn't matter the quality of product you put out there because you were still receiving dividends from a team that played 30 years ago, you wouldn't sell either. You would be stupid to let a profit making machine go like that if it required little work and effort on your end. Now, hopefully you would actually put in the work and effort in making the team the best it could be by not just being stingy and trying to cut costs no matter what, but no one would ever sell a franchise like the Chicago Bulls, not unless they were forced to. Now, Jerry Reinsdorf is very old. Let's be clear about that. Dude is 87 and probably won't be around much longer, but we all know his kids, particularly Michael Reinsdorf, will be taking over the team whenever that happens. In fact, Michael has has already started taking over the reins when it comes to a lot of the team's operations and guess what the kids aren't much different from their dad they're going to come in with the same type of mentality the same approach it's a business like anything else and for them it's all about being a smart business where you reduce costs and maximize profits now the biggest thing that gets me and why i'm always so fed up with the owners of this team is that we all know they refuse to pay the luxury tax they claim they would pay it for a winning team we all know that isn't true we all know the benefits of not going into the luxury tax as it relates to stuffing the owner's own wallet and for them, it's too good of an opportunity to pass up again, especially knowing they're still going to be selling tickets regardless of the product they put out. By not going into the luxury tax, they save money on not paying the tax itself, which the amount varies on the dollar that you spend over the tax line, which can be quite a bit for a team like the Warriors who have paid tens of millions of dollars in tax per year. 
But if you go a few million over the tax, you end up only paying a little over a million dollars in actual luxury tax. And then of course, if you don't go into the tax, you also get the revenue split of all the teams who did pay the tax. So all non-tax paying teams split the tax revenue from all of the tax paying teams. And I believe last year was something in the range of $16 million per team that they received for not going into the luxury tax. So you're talking about 17 to $18 million of money back in the Reinsdorf's pockets for not going into the tax. It's a lot of money, I know, but it's nothing when you compare it to one, their wealth and net worth, which is in the billions, and two, the amount of revenue and money this team brings into them as a whole. To quabble over a few million dollars is just asinine from the fans' perspective. Again, maybe it's good business. Why spend money if it's not going to make you that much more money? The fact of the matter is, it's going to get to a point where you're going to start losing the fan base. The next generation of kids and youth who didn't watch Michael Jordan aren't going to care. The novelty of this brand that the GOAT played for will eventually wear off. I mean, to an extent, you've already seen it with some fans. Why am I paying my hard-earned money to this owner who doesn't care about the game of basketball, whose goal in life is to be mid as long as the team makes money? I mean, for fans, you want an owner that, one, knows what they're doing, but is also willing to put out the best product of basketball out there no matter the cost. You're still going to make your millions. The least you can do is give back some entertaining basketball to the fans. Chicago, they love their sports, man. It's a shame in literally all of the major sports franchises that exist, they have some of the worst owners in their respective leagues. And so I really hope, I sincerely hope that the Reinsdorfs sell the Bulls. I really do. The fans deserve better. The city deserves better. And then once and for all, we can establish a new culture for this franchise because as much as we'd like to think after the Bulls got rid of Gar Pax and we thought it was going to be this new day, this new era in Bulls basketball where we finally have a competently run front office and establishing a culture of trust and respect towards its players. Yes, some of that has shifted for the better, but at the end of the day, as long as we still have the same owners, it's not going to matter. The perception of this franchise, the culture of the organization starts at the top and it's always going to be there as long as the Reinsdorfs are running things, which I don't see changing anytime soon when you've been gift wrapped a business that generates money like the Bulls do, even when the team is bad. Nobody would let that go. So while I think we'll all dream of that day when the team is finally sold, and I know I got my hopes up when I heard the rumors that Jerry was considering selling the White Sox, it's a pipe dream that won't be realized for a long time. I am curious though, who do you even want to own this franchise if it was up for sale? Obviously there aren't going to be many people in the world who have the kind of money to be able to purchase the Bulls, but let me know in the comments who you would like to see take a stab at owning this organization that we love so much. Let me know in the comments, as always be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.